Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs, welcome back to Pyre, and we have found our destination even further north than we already were. This is Trieste, the Silver Star, burning bright over the fissured lands of Black Basin, and this is supposedly where Sandalwood is at, so I wonder if maybe we will encounter him. That is a unicorn! Alright, <laughs> I guess we're going to see the unicorn. Still further north then, yes indeed. Not simply north, this shall prove difficult. Well, has anything on this journey been easy so far? What's the problem? Beyond the deathless tempest, uh, a tempest raging in the Sea of Solace seemingly for all eternity. A vessel such as ours has little hope of traversing it intact. We can't go around it. Come on, people, it'll just be another day in the downside. Go get yourself some sleep while we still can. Bet you'll feel better in the morning. Your optimism is infectious. Isn't it? <laughs> so I guess we are gonna rest, and in the morning we have to find a way past this eternal storm. Faye has some stuff to chat about. Oh, hi, mister. I'm so happy right now. I'm happy because I was so worried about Mr. Hedwin for a while there, you know? He was so kind to me when we first met. Him and Mr. Daryl, Mr. Greentail, and you too. But I just really like him. She sighs. She seems to be happy here. Say, do you, um... Do you think he likes me too? Faye's wondering if you think Hedwin likes her. Uh, how she feels about her. She should just talk to him. Yeah, there we go. Suggest that Faye, if she has certain feelings of Hedwin, then she should let him know. It is a rare privilege to feel loved. She stares at you a moment, then she begins to laugh. Oh, you're so silly, mister. I didn't like him like that. That's so embarrassing. Besides, I think maybe he's a little old, you know? I'm going to go cheer him up. This is a funny story. Uh, <laughs> it's like, what just happened? Faye has gained some hope that is what we ultimately wanted. Uh, is there anything in the Beyond the Crystal? My lovely reader comes to me again. To what do I owe the pleasure? No more trials yet. But we can chat to Sandra, I guess. There's an undulation I've sensed, Reader, which means I think your black wagon sails the seas, am I not right? Of course I am. <laughs> I scarce remember the sea. It's been a little while since I bathed in it, you understand. My memories of it are, of it are wistful nonetheless. Although, if I remember correctly, the Sea of Solace is a disgusting mockery of the Emerald Seas near to the Empire. Do be careful out there, will you? Now, let me cease my prattling, lest I extend my sentence by another eternity or two. We'd best stick to business. Later. And is there anything else at all we can do in here other than check the roster? I don't believe there is, so... Time to continue on. Now let's do it. We can go in a variety of directions here. We are headed for Stormwall regardless, and that presumably is this forever raging tempest wreckage in the area, and there could be valuables to find. Tizo seems very eager to see the wagon head in this direction. No reason, just... Just want to see it go there. Alright, I think Ragged Rock though, because I could do with some stuff to sell right here. Sooner or later I'll do what Tizo wants, but apparently not today. Uh, <laughs> our amphibious vehicle makes land. The remnants of a shattered fleet do little to raise the confidence of your companions, given that the massive deathless tempest rages to the north. <laughs> ought to be more concerned with the storm than finding trinkets, but he is going to find something, I'm pretty sure of it. <laughs> they go on like this for some time before turning to you. Investigating the wreckage is going to take time, but you may find something to show for it. Why not? Rookie grins wide, and let's see what we can find. Nothing down there, really? Dang it. Ugh, that sucks. That's probably the first time that one of these routes has not worked out for us. That is unfortunate. Oh well, maybe we should have listened to Tizo after all, despite the fact that he wasn't really giving us much to go on. You and your companions look upon the Deathless Tempest. The stars demand you sail beyond it, yet the very thought is beyond reason. Then something nearby in the water stirs, and from it springs something familiar. There he is! It's Sir Gilman! Hold, hold, good ladies and good sirs! This knight beseeches you to hear him, if you please! What is it now, Worm? The rites are ended. We have no further need of you. Oh, but you do, and in this t in turn, this knight has further need of you, good lady. Out with it, then. Let us be joined! Let this knight join you, please! Can you believe this, Hedwin? <laughs> not really, no. <laughs> Nay, look ye not so surprised. Your valor and the rights did stir this poor knight's soul. He swears to you upon his long-lost honor as a would-be knight errant of the Sea Dominion that he shall serve you to the end. What about your other worm friends back there, the... Hearts. They are base cowards! <laughs> this knight can no longer abide such spineless characters, having witnessed true glory in our clash upon the Hulk of Horus. Never before have we been, have we been trounced so thoroughly. 
And furthermore, this night shall aid your passage through the Deathless Tempest. It is not so, uh, is it not so that you seek passage to the north? With this night's aid, you shall achieve your wish. Sir Gilman talks our ears off. <laughs> she seems to know a way to cross the storm, so I guess probably best that we should invite him along. Are you most sure that Sandalwood would want this thing along? Mostly sure. Sandalwood wants someone for each mask, and this one seems about as good as we're going to get. Yeah. <laughs> Hedwin is more gracious. He tells Sir Gilman that if he promises to help you across the Deathless Tempest, then he can come along for now. This knight is overjoyed! He's like a companion cube all of a sudden. <laughs> he kind of looks like one that calls from Portal a little bit. He hereby swears to see you past the storm. Though first this knight requires your consent. Give this knight, give unto this knight your blessings in the name of the night wings, and thus he shall go forth. Uh, He's like, what? Sure, go for it. Ha <laughs> ha! And... He's going to help us cross the Tempest. Go for it. <laughs> as long as he helps us continue our journey, then... Sure, he has an aura trail that extends behind him. I like it. Determined to prove himself to you in the Nightwing, Sir Gilman emerges somewhere in the outer reaches of the Sea of Solace and calls out to you, Master Reader! If you can hear this knight, then he implores you. Now, lend him your guidance. This knight's objective ought to be not far east of here. Today we shall bring peace to the embroiled sea. Know, however, that among this knight's brethren, the actions we are about to take are highly forbidden. But they are highly just! I like this guy. Thus, Sir, Sil Sir Gilman sets forth to quell the storm that rages to the north. Traverse the reef. Oh, okay. So, so we're actually, so we're doing this. We are doing this. We can jump. Right. I see. I see where we're going here. Hark! Yonder lie the foul spawn of unfathomed plurns. <laughs> what? <laughs> Boiling the seas with their wrath. Exiled worms within these waters have long harbored these abominations, using them to bar passage through the downsides channels for any save this night's own kind. Be gone now from here, fiends. This knight shall finish what the Underking Oars started. Uh, so we slash. Nice. Very cool. Okay, so we just got to slash to the end of Gilman's trail. Right. Okay, so you kind of leave it behind you and then you you go whoosh -ah, like that. And it kind of takes you back along the same route. You can slash in place, but you can also... Nice. That's cool. That's cool. A nice little tutorial for his abilities, for sure. And it seems to have done something to the Tempest. Uh-oh. We've got company. Hold it right there, you traitorous slug. How dare you turn your back on this knight to your superior? Superior by rank, no longer. For we no longer serve the Commonwealth. Last this knight checked. Here you hold no sway over this knight. Ah, and what have you done to the spawn? Have you left no honor at all? This knight has done that which required doing. His honor cannot sink much lower anyhow. He figured this would be an ideal time to free himself from servitude to you. Why you? You dare staunch the Tempest for those knight wings? Good Sir Deluge. This knight was born to dare. Now come and fight this knight if you so dare as well. Oh, we're going to fight. <laughs> awesome. Banish the Pyre Hearts. Well, I guess we gotta get wrecked. I guess we just kind of lay our trail and slash. Seems pretty easy so far. What now, Sir Deluge? Shall you not face this knight yourself and leave the dirty work unto your charges? Fine, Gilman. You wish to stand against your commander, then have it your way. Sir Marsh, Lady Seagrass, to me. <laughs> Banish now this troublemaker. I think not. Ha <laughs> ha, get slashed. You are master of this knight no longer, Sir Deluge. Thus shatter our fraternal bonds. This knight would say it was an honor serving you, Sir Deluge, but that would be a bold-faced lie. And yet another stain upon his blackened reputation. Until we meet again! Wait, you lowly traitor! This knight will have your head! Gilman! Gilman! Shakes fists. That was awesome. As the day wears on, there is still no sign of the worm knight. Your companions grow restless, but then... Hail! This knight returns with newfound tales to tell and new scars to show for them. Sir Gilman is sopping wet and visibly shaken. He struggles to maintain decorum. He is, in short, the very image of a worm knight. And more importantly, that little tempest ought no, no longer pose a threat for us now. Behold! As if on cue, the deathless tempest begins to shimmer and subside. Awesome. Good work, Gilman. K 
cakewalk. Liked it. Would you look at that? He really did it. Of course this knight did it. Now, if it would be alright with you, this knight could really use some shut eye. <laughs> Just the one eye to shut there. He's like <laughs> little wormy uh, Mike Wazowski. A deal's a deal, Sir Gilman. Welcome to the Night Wings. Huzzah! <laughs> Amazing. Right, bid him welcome. So that's pretty awesome. We've got ourselves a brand new companion, and I guess we are crossing the Deathless Tempest after all. Good times. <laughs> We're going to hop our way over there and continue our journey. This is quite the story. <laughs> I like it a lot. And we come out into more interesting waters. At least it's a little bit less windy now. We're stopping here, apparently. With Sir Gilman's aid, you managed to breach the Tempest. You were true to your word, Worm. I shall give you that. But now what? We're stranded in this cursed storm. A most excellent question, and from one most fair. <laughs> Call me that once more and I shall tie you in a knot. Ah, and from one most spirited as well. This knight was wise to side with ye. He's got a bit of a crush. Just where do we turn from here? Answer the question now. He does no such thing, although eventually he does make note of a specific current that should lead you to the lands beyond. And Low Minstrel can back him up. Fair enough. <laughs> He's all like, I'm done with being seasick. Let's let's do it. Voyage on. Say, uh, Tarek? Aye, Rookie. What is it? And that loot you're always carrying around. You know how to play that thing, don't you? Why, I suppose I do. Good, because I was thinking it's a little gloomy here and we could use a little tune to lighten up the mood. You know what I mean? Aye, then. Let me see what I can do. Oh, we're getting like a little sea shanty. <laughs> Light is in the air, everyone. The valley ran with sorrowful tears and filled the waters high. Alright, to the black basin. Stars all hide away from the chill until the evening rise. Oh, 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 Didn't quite feel like talking over that. That was kind of lovely. <laughs> At last, your wagon rambles, rumbles onto jagged, solid ground of the land called Black Basin. And let's make our way into the wagon. Let's chat to Sir Gilman. He seems to have something on his mind. He's just practicing his fencing maneuvers. He regards with a single eye. Hail, Master Reader! This knight is determined to train harder, having joined the famous Night Wings. He shall ensure that this triumvirate continues to live up to its most feared reputation. This is such an honour, and this knight has a great deal of honour to regain. Having fled the pie hearts, this knight fully expects now to conduct the rites in a most honourable fashion, to the fullest letter of the law described within the books. Some triumvirates this knight has met and perchance mentioned by name, they are inclined to bend the rules a bit, sometimes a lot, and to prevail by any means they can. But this is wrong! The exile who refuses to obey the rules as they were written by the under-king Aurus and his seven friends deserves neither his honour nor his freedom. Thusly does this knight have the confidence the master reader shall resist any temptations to conduct the rites in any underhanded fashion. <laughs> and he's like, let me take a bath. He slithers off humming some sort of chivalrous tune. Wonderful. Well, we've got all kinds of tunes going on here. Sir Gilman's Crest. How awesome is that? And it doesn't seem like we have any more trials in the Beyond the Crystal, but that'll do for the moment. Let's take a look at, at Gilman then, because he <laughs> he's still level 1, but he has himself some quickness and some hope. Very little presence, much like uh, Rookie, I guess. But yeah, why he's in the downside, we do not know. We will see. But Gilman is going to be an interesting addition to the team for sure. Now, let's survey the surroundings and see where our journey is about to take us. You, f ask, you find that Hedwin has asked for several volunteers to scout the area and report back. Don't go too far and let's meet back by dusk. The exiles dwelling in these lands are rather territorial, apparently. So we stay with the black wagon and 
occasional dark shapes soaring across the sky. Eventually the companions make their way back and everyone arrives as planned. Hi everyone, I'm back, I've come back. Faye returns from the east with little to report save for word that the glowing molten rock there is very, very hot. This knight yet lives, although he has little else to report. Uh, visibly shaken, he appears to have discovered an intense fear of heights. Well, I get the feeling that you don't get much in the way of heights when you're in the ocean. Tizo wonders whether any species of fish live in the pools or the rock nearby. He seems disappointed to have left the water behind. I guess he kind of liked it out there. There's a western pass that seems traversable. If by the, the light of dawn the shadows and crags may well cover our advance against whomever may be watching. Uh, we shall not remain hidden for long during the climb toward the nest of Trieste. The exiles of the high wing remnants. Oh gosh, the harps. They were the people that uh, Hedwin was defending the the wall against. Divinity. Negotiate with them. Hedwin steps in as the lone minstrel bows and backs away. Hey, let's not decide on this just yet. We're not going to go anywhere right now. That much we can agree on. We'll decide how best to go ahead come morning. Let's take the rest of the afternoon and get our bearings. Time for vocations. Heck yes. Okay, well, I feel like we've done the first two before, but we kind of struck out when it came to getting goods and I think we should forage for resources while we're here. Let's try the black rock. Sen uh, traces of celestial residue. Something Falcon Ron values. So that would be some stardust. But the molten pools might have something. Let's give that a try. Enough scrounging for one day. Usually there isn't much but you never look you, you never get and believe you me it adds up. Okay so we got another Oh, fire caps. 76 coins at the slug market. Okay, well, I guess we go there. And that will do it for that. Let's continue the journey. And hopefully we'll get to the right before the end of this episode. So the lone minstrel thinks he can negotiate a safe passage with the harps. Jodariel wishes to avoid the harps by staying on low ground. I think we'll go with the minstrel on this one because maybe we'll get to learn a, bit, a little bit more about how the harps and headwind know each other. Let's go with the minstrel. Especially if he thinks he can negotiate his way past here. I do hope this won't end up being a mistake. Show yourselves, you frightened little birds. All day long, winged shadows cross the sun. You're being watched. Jodariel is very unhappy about it, though the lone minstrel now attempts to calm her. But please believe me, madam, when I say your enmity towards the harps had best be held in check here. <laughs> okay, there we go. He calls towards the heavens. Good sisters, we are humble travellers such as you and beg your leave. We journeyed by the sea and se seek safe passage through your lands. We shall not disturb your hunting or your nests. Nothing but silence. Uh, oh, there they are. All right, hello. <laughs> you can see why Hedwin had the hots for this one. Oh, she's swooped him up. Oh, dear. <laughs> we need to go find him. For a long, terrible moment, you're alone with your panic. He soon returns. We thank you for your hospitality, good sisters. We shall be on our way. And it looks like they're letting us pass. Some dispute within their ranks and no further troubles for the time being. Uh-oh. Jodaria lost minus four hope. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that, Jody. Goodness knows how it would have worked out if it went the other way. But she is not having a good time down here, it seems like. Maybe we should leave her out of the next right if she's not going to be super hopeful. We will see. At last you arrive at the nest of Trieste, where the next rite is soon to commence. You cannot shake the feeling that the unseen eyes watched your wagon's ascent and remain watching now. Well, time to visit the slug market just so we can trade away this mushroom for the good stuff. <laughs> All I want to do is to get you the best deals in the downside. So, let's trade this away. Proceed, and a couple of pinches of stardust. This one is a little bit better than the other one, so let's grab both of those because I want to level up the stuff that we already have. What have we got here? Righteous Flame. Bearer's Pyre is restored by up to five. Oh, okay, so that's interesting, but that's that's also pretty good, you know? Like, some of these are looking pretty inviting right now. However, I think we don't really have enough money for the good ones right now, so we should probably hold on to our coins for the moment. <laughs> the favorite customers we've had all week. Let's quickly make our way into the wagon, catch up on what the book has to say for itself. So we've got a brand new page of chapter one. 
My emperor lay there, bleeding and alone, stranded in a bitter land beyond the river. With fleeting consciousness, he fully understood the folly of his quest and the folly of his rule over his country. Thus did he await the last embrace. It was the imp Haub that nursed him back to health, and warned him often of the dangers he would have to face. Many enemies of Myrrh would come in search for him, some under employment by the rope caller, some longing openly for cold, uncomplicated vengeance. I was one of them. I plunged into the river willingly. We needed to be sure that he was dead. And that's that for now. Alright, what's going on up in here? We need to... I think we need to level up this contract. <laughs> I like the idea of leveling that up a little bit. Especially if we can add some points to it. There we go. And Hedwin is going to be with us for this right. So hopefully we can get a little bit more coin on the go. Jody's hope is way down. That is not too great. <laughs> Shattered right now. And she's got a minus five. Okay, well hopefully we can do something about that. In the meantime, I think we need to upgrade something else. Is that going to... No, that's not going to work out for that. Uh, yeah, Gilman needs some kind of <laughs> some kind of talisman at some point. Let's add this to Rookies. I guess we may as well, because that one's going to be sticking with us for a little while, I imagine. Alright, I think it is probably time to commence the right and round off this part of the trip. You and your fellow exiles gather on the blasted lands called the Nest of Trieste, expecting the imminent commencement of the rites. No sign of any adversaries, but of course, it's the harps. This then is what passes for the Nightwings now. Such a rabble. Not even dressed for the occasion yet. It seems the scribes have little pride in their tradition. Hold your tongue, little bird. We have not come for talk. No, you've come on behalf of your commonwealth. Not so much. Mark well my words, you horned filth. When we at last free ourselves, your home shall burn. With that, the harp swoops off as Jodariel glowers after her. And another harp has turned up. Hello, she's quite serious, I assure you. I can help you sort her out. It's in our mutual interest. You know naught of my interest. Mm, let's give this another shot. Hi, my name is Pamitha Thane. She's a harp, but not one of their team. The surly one back there, that was my blood sister. No need to judge her harshly, though. We've only met just now, though I must say, something about you reminds me of her. <laughs> How dare you implicate that I have anything in common with your ilk. Hedwin is all like, hey, harps. Harps are a thing. They're a thing. Trust me on this one. <laughs> By the way, however did you make it all this way across the sea? Didn't see you fly in. Trust is something I'm loath to give away, Hedwin, but you've set our course thus far and I've followed, so do as you must. He's all like, hey, want to join our crew? What's your take on this one, my friend? Our informant wants someone for each mask. I hadn't, I hadn't expected we'd run into a harp, yet here she is. What are you getting from her? Pamitha. Arida, are you? Pleasure to make your acquaintance, darling. Well, here I am. Gaze intently all you like and tell your comrade there the truth of it, why don't you? Her motives here and now are earnest. Uh, she seems alright. Uh, maybe that her training gives some resistance to your scrutiny. Hmm, yeah, I don't know if I want to be trusting of everyone. Several misgivings about Pamitha and suggest caution before accepting her into your ranks. I just have to give Sandalwood the benefit of the doubt. Do you, though? I feel like Sandalwood needs to turn up and speak for himself every once in a while. We've, so, we've come this fast thanks to a certain faith. Back me up on this. Jody won't like it. I'm Hedwin. We'll accept your offer on two conditions. Conditions. Okay, as long as you like conditions. Make sure that your blood sister and her friends don't give us any trouble. You have to find a way to get along with Jody. Cool. Okay. We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll see how Pamitha does. She has a score to settle. Well, I guess if she's going to be joining us for this right, then we'd better get used to her then, hadn't we? Frida. I thought for sure the stars would have eluded you by now. Well, it's pretty much the only way we can get around, here so <laughs> here we are. Upon the nest of Triesta. Triesta. And you've swelled the ranks of your triumvirate not merely with another... But with two. Yeah, there's a lot of it about. One from the pyre heart, no less. And one who seeks the favor of the adversaries whom you'll imminently face. They are the essence. 
winged terrors, as you soon shall see. Hello, we're the essence. Your <laughs> longing for freedom match their hatred for the vibrant country that was once your home. From a distance, you observe as Pamitha, now clad in Nightwing's raiments, heads towards your adversaries in the rights. You, what sort of heathen harp would dare take wing against us? It's me, Tamitha and Pamitha. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> it's like a Tia and Tamara situation. What in the saint's name are you doing here with them? Saint Triesta, she's the, the harp scribe, I guess. Doubtless come to dig your talons in my back again. No, sister, I've come to have a word with you. Save it. I cannot help but share your poisoned blood. I shan't ever count you as my sister. You believe... You expect me to believe that you came all this way for talk? You waste your time as ever. What if life's... What's life if not a waste of time, dear sister? Give me a chance, why don't you? What do you even have to lose anymore? Besides, I've come a long way. Silence. You shan't have come here. And the time for talk is long since past. If you could only... If only you could see yourself again consorting with my enemies. Fine then. Savor their defeat. But I warn you, stay away from me. Mm. Well, they got beef, folks. But we've got a right to perform. Pamitha gets your attention. Listen to me, reader, darling. The rest of you are ill-equipped to navigate this place. Let me conduct this right on your behalf, and my wings will bring you victory. <laughs> so the harps eat the worms. This knight hereby volunteers his post in the triumvirate for thee. Okay, so we got to use Pamitha, basically. She should be better suited to the rights here than everybody else. I guess we can equip the faith stone. That makes sense. Good to have a little extra hope. So, Pamitha. <laughs> I thought you'd never ask there, darling. I accept. And then Jody is like, nah, mate. <laughs> Which is fine, because I was probably not going to use her anyway, let's be real. Uh, I think Tizo is probably going to be good as well, because he can fly. And, hey, <laughs> hey, promises to do his best. And I guess either Faye or... <laughs> chivalrous. He's chivalrous right now. Uh, <laughs> either Fay or Hedwin. I'm thinking Hedwin right here because he's got experience with the harps. So Hedwin. I guess he can hang out too. You can count on me, my friend. It is done. <laughs> How poetic that we meet here in the downside. I can think of nowhere else where I'd rather see you rot for what you did to our people and to me. So, let's get to it. Pamitha seems to sense your presence and then catches your attention. Hello there, reader darling. If I'm to be at your mercy in all this, I'd like it very much if you could minimize how often I'm to wallow in a state of banishment. Let me show you what we sisters of the High Wing remnants can do. Hold X to fly. So, she's essentially like Tizo in that she can fly. She dashes like so. Dashes knock others away. All but forgotten Saint Triesta's grace. Nice. And tackle. Oh, cool. Okay. And she can't be banished. She's shielded. That's awesome. Okay. Very cool. <laughs> we harps, we're not so bad now, I suppose. We'd better get to work, hmm? Don't go underestimating Tamitha. Talon formation. Oh, I guess so. <laughs> How appropriate. All right. Well, let's go to Tizo first, if we can. Or maybe we'll just tackle. Yeah, there we go. Catch you all the way out. Aha! Not today. Not today, ladies. All right, let's uh, let's grab this. And Oh, <laughs> I kind of ringed myself out over there. Unfortunate, but I guess. Tamitha. Let's wreck these guys. Oh, of course, we can't tackle once we have the orb. I hadn't even thought about that. <laughs> all right, cast over here. If we can. Alright, defend the pyre. Defend the pyre. Full back. Full back and defend. There we go. Yeah, try it. Oh, dang it. Okay, they can fly it in. I was thinking they had to drop in before that. Not to worry. Tizo, was it? Tell me something. You know how to fly? And he's like, yep. Then listen up. My blood sister over there. She'll swoop right past you if you're careless, but we harps simply cannot get much altitude down here. So if she goes for any unfair tricks, just jump for it and catch her in the act. Nice. Okay. Block flying adversaries. Cool. Sounds good. Let's do it. And ha-ha. Oh, okay. <laughs> that didn't work out quite so well. Nice. Okay, so we can do it that way. Pretty good. 
tackle. We've got the pyre. Well, we've got the, the orb, rather, and dunk it. Nice. 20-20. Pretty good. Got to jump over here, and we've evened the score a little bit. Oh, we managed to sneak it in and dunked. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can... Yeah, let's get out over this way a little bit and fling it in so we don't have to... Oh, dang it. Foiled. <laughs> he was like, mmm, foiled. Okay, they really went for us that time. Yeah, don't get... Oh, ouch. Okay. Yeah, Hedwin is <laughs> waiting to come back still. All right, let's hang back and wait for Tizo to respawn. There we go. Oh, no. Yeah, we've banished ourselves. Oops. That was that was terrible. Although, apparently, they're passing back. So, blocked. <laughs> hey. Oh, dang it. Come on. Are you serious? <laughs> they can just walk it in at this point. Yeah. Yeah, that wasn't the best strategy. <laughs> oh, well. At least we got everyone back. Got to fly over those gaps. That's the problem. All right. Let's regain our stamina and fling. Dang it. Nope. Jump. Ah, rats. Okay, okay. Play it safe. Play it safe. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I went for the orb there and did not do so well. All right, let's sprint it in with headwind. Ah, nope. Nope, that's not going to work out for us. I guess we got to use that flying ability a little bit more. Time to get the tackle in. Nice. Yep, and <laughs> is absolutely squandering the chance right now. Jump! Oh, I thought we were going to make it that time. All right, all right, all right. Come on. Get up here. Oh, no, 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 no. I thought I was going to block, but there we go. Get dropped. Come on, Tizo. Walk it in. Yes! We zipped over to it. Not bad. Well, he's getting the, the least amount of points, but at least he's getting points right now. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Get wrecked. Oh. Need to fling it over the divide. Oh, gosh. We both got wrecked at that point. All right. Yeah, you're dropping down there. <laughs> Headwind. Fling. Not bad. Not bad. Let's see what we can do here. Oh, yes. Managed to dash it. <laughs> They're not having fun over those chasms, are they? Headwind. Sort that one out. Nice. Okay, we got it. We got it. Interception. Let's pass run around here. Hedwin is banished for the moment, but you know what? We can walk it in over there. Oh, this is a tough match. They're difficult to deal with, and I imagine getting any kind of uh, combination of these in future matches is going to be a little difficult. Fling it! Oh, caught, of course. <laughs> of course. Tizo. Yeah, that's it. Banish them back to where they came from. Come on down. <laughs> hey. All right, let's zip it around here. Zip it. Oh, no way. <laughs> zip it good. Tizo. Time to drop them. <laughs> yeah, we're not doing super well here, but at least we are not absolutely tanking. There we go. Walk it in. We've only got six points left. Let's make this a good one, folks. Damn you, Pamatha! You're no true Thane. What? <laughs> Clan Thane. Okay. That must be their little family. I hate to break it to you, Tamatha, but I don't think my actions, however much they hurt you, have had any effect on our familial status. Look, I know I wronged you. That's why I'm here. You don't know my side of the story. And she's like, no, nah, I don't want to hear it. Come and take it. You and me. You think you see Pamatha shake her head. Everyone stay back. I guess we've just got to use her then. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. Prevail over Tamatha. All right, well, I guess we'll give it our best shot. Yeah, that's it. Get tackled. <laughs> oh, no, we fumbled. We fumbled. Get wrecked. Oh, no, no way. No way, no way. All right, respawn, respawn. Let's do this. Come on. Drop it. And get tackled. <laughs> you just got to release a little sooner. All right, do the fly. Do the flying thing. And... Booyah! Dunked on! Get wrecked, Tamatha. 
<laughs> Super good. Let's hope so, because we need to settle whatever beef the these right girls have. The right is done. You Commonwealth filth. Only through that traitor's help could you have beaten us. Well, it was kind of one-on-one -on -one at the end, dude. <laughs> you postponed the coming of our liberty, but we are ever patient and our sisters on the other side shall have the day with or without my aid. Tamitha, wait, please. You found good company there, Pamitha. May you wither here with them. I, sin I hope sincerely we shan't ever meet again. Oh well, not quite the outcome you wanted. <laughs> We're going back to the wagon. She's like, yeah, sure, go for it. Well, I guess... Oh, Hedwin's rank three, fantastic. I used to think the scribes were stuff of stories, but all of this, this really is their doing, isn't it? I guess we have ourselves a new ally then, and Hedwin and his allies move and pass the orb more quickly. May instantly return banished allies by moving to where they fell. That sounds useful, let's give that one a try. Witness the rights first hand and be inspired. Hey, and Tizo has leveled up as well. Fantastic. Had a flash of inspiration about his role in the rights. And you know what? We can probably move on. Implode can banish more adversaries. Tizo returns faster than usual when imploding. Or the moon sign thing. This sounds really interesting. I want to give that a try. So let's have a go. And Pamitha, not quite leveling up, but there will be opportunity for that soon, I am sure. Fantastic. Okay. After overcoming the essence in a pitched battle, you and the others return to your wagon to consider your next move and how best to integrate Pamitha into the group, especially seeing as she and Jody doesn't don't, don't seem to get on very well. Don't worry, I won't be staying any longer than it takes. I like my air fresh so I can sleep up on the roof. I trust the rights will cause my path and Tamitha's to cross again before long. You're welcome with us for now, Pamitha. Trust is what got us here. Isn't that right, Rookie? But Rookie does not seem to hear the question. He's been rather quiet since first encountering your new guest. <laughs> He's uh, <laughs> he's a little bit smitten, I think. He runs off. During this discussion, the minstrel pulls you aside. Reader, I ask a moment of your time outside, probably to choose our next destination, if I'm any judge of this by now. There is somewhere I may ask we go here in Black Basin, Reader, by your leave, of course, and provided that the stars allow it. Would you look upon them for us, please? Look towards the heavens and seek out our destination and as usual we are going to be leaving it there for today before we seek out Lou the Vernal Star in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Pyre. Please leave a like on it for me if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you want to see more and I will see you guys very soon. Bye for now.